Hello, you're watching Eye on Africa here on France 24. I'm Julia Kim, and these are the headlines across the continent. Polls have closed in Namibia's most unpredictable elections since independence in 1990. This Wednesday's vote comes amid widespread dissatisfaction with the ruling party and its president. France's defence minister arrives in Mali following the death of 13 French soldiers. We'll be speaking to our correspondent to find out more about the difficulties facing the troops there. And an attempt to break the cycle of electoral violence in Kenya. President Uhuru Kenyatta unveils a new report outlining a raft of wide-scale reforms to unite the country. But first, polls have closed in Namibia's most unpredictable elections to date. Economic hardships and a corruption scandal have dented the popularity of the Southwest Africa People's Organization, the party that has ruled the country since independence in 1990. But in the last five years, Namibians have been struggling under mounting debt, austerity measures and chronic drought. Fed up with a weak economy and spiralling unemployment, this is what they had to say. There's so many things to be changed in, in this country. Very, very, very many things. Not even, even corruptions, the education, the health and the kids in the street. Because now kids are going in the street and, be, uh, and get, uh, become crimes, doing crimes and drugs and, drugs and everything. I have uh, casted my vote and I'm so happy and proud about it. Uh, just to revive our economy, to create more employment, especially for the youth, and uh, to fight corruption and uh, to reduce poverty as well by creating jobs among the youth. Yeah, that's what I'm voting from today's elections. Well, Namibia's president, Hage Gengob, faces a tough challenge from a 61-year-old dentist. Like Gengob, Dr. Panduleni Itula is a member of the ruling party but ran as an independent. With youth unemployment nearing 50% and the incumbent's involvement in an international corruption scandal, Itula has seen his popularity skyrocket. An unprecedented runoff election might be needed if no presidential candidate can win an outright majority. Emerald Maxwell has more on the contenders. He won Namibia's presidency five years ago with 87% of the vote. And the South West Africa People's Organization has enjoyed a two-thirds parliamentary majority since 1994. Now President Hage Gengob may not be able to fill stadiums anymore, but he's still predicted to secure a second mandate. To secure a better future for Namibia, Vote for the Swapo party. Also vote for me so that I can continue with what we have done. Namibia is one of Africa's richest countries in terms of resources, with vast uranium and diamond reserves. That wealth, though, doesn't trickle down to many. And amid a prolonged economic slump, 78-year-old Gengob has lost fans, particularly among the young. McHenry Venani is hoping to channel that frustration into votes for his popular democratic movement. It is about queuing up to go and make that vote. And I want to tell the young people, on the 27th of November, please be the first ones on the queues to go and make a change. Venani is one of 10 contenders to take Gengob on, but his party is dogged by the legacy of its affiliation with apartheid South Africa before independence. The rest of Namibia's opposition, meanwhile, is ethnically divided. On Monday, the Electoral Tribunal threw out an application by opposition leaders seeking to bar the use of electronic voting machines, which it claimed raised prospects of fraud. Namibia was the first African country to use the machines in 2014. Emerald Maxwell with that report there. Now, there will be a runoff election on December 29th in Guinea-Bissau to choose its new president. Sunday's first round vote saw Domingo Simoes Pereira finish with 40% and Umaru Sissoko Mbalo come second with 28% of the vote. Former President Jose Mario Vaz was punished at the polls after a mandate tainted by political infighting and corruption. The former Portuguese colony is desperate for stability after decades of coups and a rampant drug trade that's capitalised on the country's insecurity. 
Next, 19 people have been killed in eastern DR Congo by an armed group blamed for a string of massacres in the area. The UN's mission in Congo, MONUSCO, said the attack occurred just 30 kilometers from the city of Beni. Beni on Monday was rocked by deadly protests when angry crowds railed against UN peacekeepers for failing to protect them. MONUSCO said it's launched a probe after allegations that its troops had killed a demonstrator. According to a Congolese NGO, in this month alone, the number of civilians killed by militants in the area has risen to 99. Well, France's defence minister has arrived in northern Mali to pay tribute to the 13 French troops killed in a helicopter collision. Florence Parly arrived along with top military brass at the Barcane base in Gao, ahead of the repatriation of the soldiers' bodies. The incident has highlighted the difficulty of the French mission in the Sahel region, one of the key fronts in the global fight against extremism. But France's top general admitted that a definitive victory there is impossible. In the last two months, over 100 Malian soldiers were killed by militants who have spread across an area the size of Western Europe. Well, for more on that, we can now cross live to Bamako to speak to France 24's Liane Besson-Pierre. Liane, what's been the reaction on the ground? Are people there feeling reassured by the troops' presence? Well, the f some 4,500 French troops alongside 15,000 UN peacekeeping troops is quite a massive operation, but that hasn't stopped people saying they don't want France here. We've seen uh, uh, protests in recent weeks. We've seen the French flag being uh, burnt. We've seen posters in the streets saying we don't want France here. France, go away. So there has been some very strong reaction uh, in recent weeks, as you've rightly just said. Uh, more than 100 Malian soldiers, of which uh, Islamic State has claimed responsibility for those uh, deaths in uh, this region. So uh, tempers are, are starting to flare. Uh, people are feeling angry at what is happening and are not, uh, I think, feeling reassured by the presence of the French troops in the country. Uh, now, the French chief of staff um, of the French Armed Forces, General François Lecontre, said... France will never achieve a definitive victory there. How is the fight against the insurgents developing at the moment? Well, that is in stark contrast to what uh, Emmanuel Macron, President Emmanuel Macron, said in uh, May 2017, uh, shortly after he took office, saying uh, that uh, the Operation Barkhane will only stop when there's no Islamist terrorism in the region. So one has to wonder what uh, he thinks now. Uh, it has been a difficult fight. Um, several uh, f uh, French soldiers have lost their lives. And now uh, this attack is in a heavy helicopter attack where they said there was very low visibility on a moonless night and the helicopters were very low in in um, in trying to uh, flush out those terrorists in that part of the country and so it's been a very tough fight and i think uh, looking at uh, looking at the future it's going to be a very tough call to make um, you said it's a very tough fight what are the particular challenges facing the troops on the ground there The, well, the challenges, as you rightly said, the area is so vast and it's also spreading. So you've had the, the, the in central Mali, it's now no longer just in central Mali, this fight against terrorism in the region. It's spreading towards the border of Niger and into Niger. Uh, we've seen several attacks in Burkina Faso in Mali and on the border of Burkina Faso as well. So it is spreading to a very large stretch of land, which I think logistically is becoming very difficult uh, for these troops. The helicopters were in fact brought in to assist troops that have been on the ground. Uh, and that's when the, the collision took place on Monday night. So logistically, it is very difficult working in this, um, in this area. For the troops, um, for the jihadists, uh, they are becoming a bit more, uh, agile in what they're doing uh, and it appears that uh, they're not, intelligence on the ground is not able to keep up and they're not able to preempt when these attacks are going to take place any longer. Leanne Besson-Pierre, thank you very much for that. Leanne Besson-Pierre reporting to us there from Bamako in Mali. Well, Kenya's president has unveiled the Building Bridges Initiative to hundreds of lawmakers in Nairobi. 
The report aims to end the decades-long cycle of electoral violence which has dogged the country. It's the result of nationwide consultations with the public and outlines major constitutional changes. Our correspondent Julia Steers tells us more about this long-awaited document. President Kenyatta launched the Building Bridges Initiative report in Nairobi on Wednesday, and that report is the result of a political deal struck in the wake of a contested 2017 election that established a task force to look into issues here like tribalism, political divisiveness, and corruption. That task force says they've talked to over 7,000 Kenyans over the last 18 months about these issues and potential reforms laid out in the report. The main takeaways on the political level were the appointment of a prime minister to be appointed by the president and of an official leader of the opposition. Now, that post is likely a reaction to the winner-take-all nature of presidential politics here that have led the country into post-election violence in the past few decades. There were reforms laid out to tackle corruption and in the business sector as well to tackle high levels of youth unemployment and a stagnating GDP. MPs at the event reacted positively to the proposed reforms and the president asked Kenyans to read the nearly 200 page report ahead of a national conversation to take place early next year. Well, that's it from us. There's more news coming up. Stay tuned. The world is ever-changing. The news doesn't wait. That's why at France 24, we'll always be there to help make sense of world events. For the best international coverage, 24 hours a day, no matter what, France 24 is with you everywhere, all the time. Liberté, égalité, actualité.